Welcome to this video on locking cells until other cells have data in them in Microsoft Excel. So let me explain what I'm going to show you here. I want to make sure that the data on this spreadsheet, this, this, uh, this table in Microsoft Excel is completed. And I want to force someone to put some data in before they move on to the next cell. And this might be quite useful if you if you have multiple people using the same spreadsheet, you've got feeding the data in, and at times you've got information missing. And there's something that they always put in, but maybe something that is missed. And it might also be relevant to any formulas and functions that you've got in the background as well. So you want to make sure that that data has been entered before they go and enter the next set of data. So I've got another row at the bottom here of my table. I've got lots of information. And what I want them to do is absolutely put something in to the order number field before I get the amount or anything like that. So it's the order number cell that I want to be completed before the order amount is entered. And obviously your scenario might be totally different, but you basically lock in one cell until another cell has information in it. When it's blank, it won't let you put anything in. So let's have a look at how you do it. So I'm going to go to the cell where I want it to be locked, which is the order amount, remember. I want I don't want them to put anything in order amount until order number has been entered so that I get both of sets of detail. So I'm going to go to that cell and then I'm going to go to the data tab at the top. I'm going to click on that data tab just in case it's not open. Mine does not open. And I want data validation. So I'm going to be in the data tool section towards the right hand side. And if yours is quite small like mine, you can just hover over them and it'll show you exactly what you're looking for. And I want data validation. So I'm going to click on that option and I'm just going to pull that, that box down so we can fully see it in the recording screen. So I'm in the settings tab. And I'm going to go to the allow drop down. It's currently set as any value. And I'm going to change that to custom. And then I've got a formula field. So I need to put something in here because I want the system, I want Excel to know that if the cell before that is blank, then lock this cell down that I'm currently in. Remember, I'm in the order amount. I want the order number to be block locked. So I'm going to put in a formula. So any time. I'm going to click on that cell. Anytime you're doing a formula or function, remember it's the equal sign and you are going to have to write this out from scratch. So I'll make sure I'm zoomed in really nicely here so you can see it, but it is ni a nice easy one. So equals not. So you're only going to unlock it when it's not blank. So I'm going to open up my brackets and put is blank. I'm going to open up another set of brackets and then I want to put in the cell that I'm going to be looking at which cell do I want to make sure is completed before the one that I want to unlock. So that would be E31 in my example here. And then I need to close the brackets twice because remember I opened two sets of brackets. So I need to close two sets of brackets. So I've got equals not and then in brackets I've got is blank. And then in brackets again I've got the cell that I want to refer to. So when that one's blank, when E31 is blank, it doesn't have anything in it, then F31 is going to be locked. If it's got something in it, then F31 will unlock. That's what this formula will do. The final thing we need to do is if you see that ignore blank tick box, you need to uncheck it. Because obviously that's going to cause a few issues when we're talking about blanks in the formula anyway. And then I'm just going to click OK. So nothing's really happened now. You can't really see it. But let's try and put in an order amount without putting in the order number. Now I pressed enter. So I put something in there. But as soon as I press enter, it's going to give me an error. Now your error might look a little bit different depending on what version of Microsoft Excel you're using. Just for just for the information on this video, I'm, I have a 365 license. And I'm using the desktop version of Excel on a Windows device on a Windows PC. So your box might look a bit different, but it's basically telling you 
that um, you can't do it. There's rules in there. You can go to help and sometimes see a little bit more detail, but there's a rule in there that's doing it. So just in case this comes up and you don't get a lot of detail on this error, so maybe just put a note in there to add to that as well. But this means that it's just going to stop you from... I'm going to press retry and I can try doing it again, but obviously I put anything in that box before. It won't. So let's put an order number in there. And the formatting's a bit weird, but I can obviously just use the format painter. So I've popped an order number in there now, and let's try putting in an order amount. Let's move across, and it's locked it in place there really nicely. So now it's forced me to put in that information. So if you're going to use this, just make it really clear on the spreadsheet or to the users who are going to use it that you're going to have to put that information in. And if you get locked out of any cells, it's because it's expecting you to put other details in. So a nice, easy one to get you started with that. If you have a lot of people entering information into spreadsheets and you just get some really funny data, it might be another way that helps you lock it down so you get the data you're looking for. And just another way to use Microsoft Excel as well. Have a go at that one. Let us know in the comments how you get on, how you might utilize this bit of functionality as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.